What's up, everybody? This is Pastor Jacob. So um, really quickly, I wanted to touch on this topic. All right. So when we talk about the whole Thai Tribute um, Breakfast Club interview, like it's it's um, it's a mixed bag. Now, there are some things that he talked about that I would agree with. There are some things that he talked about that I would say, uh -uh, you wrong. Um, it's a mixed bag. So he said that the church system, the church institution, the way the church is ran is whack. Now, again, while I agree, absolutely agree that there are some issues with the way churches are ran, you have to be very careful because you're talking about the, the bride of Christ and you have to be very careful when you get ready to get on the radio with thousands or millions of listeners, you have to uh, prepare what you're going to say. Make sure you're, you're saying what you want to say, because if you don't say what you prepared, you'll say something you didn't prepare. So, uh, he says that the church structure, and then he goes to, you know, uh, clean it up or, or get it together in the, uh, uh, later on in the video. And he says, um, I believe, uh, Jess Hilarious was the one who said that, that some churches treat their pastors like God. And he said, yeah, that's what I mean, that, that the church system was whack. And so he, he, he says, so I'm going by what he says. He says that's what he meant by the church being whack or, or, or the church system or the church structure is whack. And um, so let's talk about that then. There are some churches, I've seen it since I was a kid. There are some churches that treat their pastors like he's a god. And I do believe that's wrong. Now, should the pastor... Is the pastor worthy of double honor? Absolutely. Should the pastor receive honor? Absolutely. Should the pastor be well respected and well liked and, and, and well honored in his congregation? Absolutely. But there are some things that go too far. Like I've seen several pastors, many pastors, where they can't carry their own coat. They can't carry their own Bible. They, they, they can't carry their own hat. Somebody's like waiting on them hand and foot to take their Bible from them, take their hat from them, take their coat from them, take their jacket from them, take this or that from them, whatever it is. And they call them armor bearers. And many times, many times, if I'm honest, at least in my own experience from what I have seen with my own two eyes, many times the armor bearer person is an effeminate young man, if not outright homosexual. I do not understand that. I don't understand what the point of that is. Maybe the pastor's uh, uh, mentoring the young man and trying to teach him manly ways or something. And if that's so, then good on you. But I'm telling you what it looked like. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. And there are other people who look at it from the outside and say, hey, something looks, and I'm not calling none of the pastors funny or nothing. I'm not saying that they were doing anything strange or nothing, even though we know that some pastors do do that. But I'm not talking about those pastors because I don't know any pastor personally, I don't think, that done any homosexual activity that I know personally. But I do know some personally that they can't, like somebody taking a coat, somebody taking a hat, somebody taking, you know, they take the watch, take the shoes, take the, take everything. Like they, they, it's like, are these people valet or are they your congregation? Are these people your butlers? Are these people your maids? Are these people, you know, like I understand serving, but this is going too far. Treating this man like he's royalty. And mind you, we should respect them and honor them. But you can't take your own coat off. I can take my own coat off. And I'm a pastor. So I can take my own coat off. I can carry my own Bible. I don't need an armor bearer. Where do we get this stuff from? Anyway, so that's that.
And so I can agree with that part of the, 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 the video or the interview. Um, then there was another part where um, they were talking about, um, you know, uh, uh, why they go to church or why they don't go to church. And they say, hey, you got to pass around that bucket. And they didn't get enough money. You know, they pass around the bucket again and they pass around again. And I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen at, at, at many churches. They have a goal in mind and they're trying to raise X amount of money. And, and, and they don't get that amount. And they're not just going to say, well, we thank you for all your liberal giving because that's what we would do at my church. We, we thank you for all your liberal giving. We have made sure that we have uh, uh, spoken and let the people know ahead of time what our goal is, what we're trying to take up, what it is for. So then that people could prepare to, 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 to make that sacrifice. And if we make it great, thank God. If not, we'll figure it out. God, God will make a way, but I'm not, what I'm not going to do, what I, I, I try my best to make sure does not happen at my church and, 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 or at the church that God has left me in charge of. Let me say it that way. Cause I don't want people saying, Oh, I, I think I'm somebody. I don't think I'm nobody. I'm just saying that at the church that God has given me charge over that I do not plan. And I don't think I ever will. And I pray that I never will ask for another round. Hey, y'all, come on, let's do better. No, we, y'all gave, you gave what you wanted to give. Now God might got to do something with your heart. Your heart might be stingy. You might've gave five when you could have gave 20 or you might, might've gave 20 when you could have gave a hundred, but I'm going to let God deal with you. I'm not going to compel you to give. I'm not going to, uh, 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 or, um, uh, talk it out of you. I'm not going to give you this spill about why you need to give da, 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 da. no i'm i make it clear when we do our offerings at new crossroads matter of fact we stopped doing it right here lately because i feel like it's a broken record but we might go back to doing it but second corinthians chapter 8 verses 10 through 12 we read that and then we read second corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 through 8 and if you don't hear the freedom in that to give as you see fit. Give as you decided in your heart. Give according to what you have, not according to what you don't have. Then I don't know what else to take. But I'm not going to beg you for your money. I'm not going to make you come around again. Whatever you give the first time, I believe that is what you decided in your heart that that is what you were cheerful giving and God loves a cheerful giver. I think after you tell them to come around again after the first time, I don't think they're giving cheerfully anymore. So then you're causing people to sin, I believe. But that's that. And that does run people away from the church. Now, mind you, does that mean that some people wasn't going to run away anyway? Yeah. Some people just didn't want to come to church and, and, them saying the church is greedy and money hungry is an excuse for them to leave. Yes, that is true. But with that being said, does that mean we give people the ammunition to shoot at the church? Why do we load the gun up and then put the gun in the robber's hands? These people don't want to be in a church anyway. But then when they do come to church, we tell them to come around two and three times and, and we take 30 minutes to take up the offering and keep dragging and dragging and dragging and begging and begging and begging and telling people what God going to do for them in order for them to give. And then when they leave the church, they talk bad about the church. And it might not necessarily be a bad church, but it is a poor practice because people have so much overhead. They're paying everybody and they might not can't afford to pay everybody. They're paying. I'm just using this as an example. I don't know any particular cases, but I'm saying you're paying the drum player, you're paying the keyboard player, you're paying the choir director, uh, you're paying the, the, the preacher you got coming in, you're paying this one, you're paying that one, you're paying the usher, you're paying the deacon, you're paying everybody. And so then you got $1,500, $2,000 that got to go out every single month before you make anything. And so then when the people don't give you the amount you need, you, 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 you go crazy and you beat them down, beat them, beat them, beat them. We need money. We need money. We need money. We need money. And it's not good. It's not good. It looks bad. It is bad. 
and we shouldn't be doing that. So, you know, I agree with that portion of the uh, the interview. All right. So one last thing, when you uh, listen to all of them talking about their experience with church, when you listen to Ty Tribbett talk about his experience with church, where they only do church online, that ain't church thing. If they don't have a congregation meeting, now mind you, I ain't say you got to have no fancy building. I ain't talking about none of that. You can meet in the house. You can meet in the backyard. You can meet under a tool shed. Make no difference where you meet at. But the saints are supposed to come together. And if you're only doing online online church, if you're only doing online church, you already it's already not good. Not good at all. That's not right. It's not okay. That doesn't uh, adhere to the command of Hebrews chapter 1025, where it says, fail not to assemble yourselves together, as is the habit of some. So, um, yeah, that's a no. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. Then uh, Charlemagne, who is, he grew up Jehovah's Witness. He says he goes to uh, T.D. Jakes church and, or he watched T.D. Jakes and Sarah Jakes on, on, you know, online or TV or whatever. He watches the Potter's house. He thinks they're anointed. Then you know nothing about anointing. You know nothing about anointing. So then that's, that's him. Uh, then you look at, um, what is it? DJ Envy. DJ Envy said that he doesn't, um, go to church. They don't want to get up Sunday morning and everybody's got to get dressed and everybody's got to look pressed and proper and they got to do all of this to get to church. And so they just rather make pancakes, sit home with your family and Watch it from the comfort of his own home. Uh, yeah, no, that's not going to work either. Um, for the same reasons it isn't going to work for Ty Tribbett. Uh, you performing in front of a camera online and somebody sitting at home watching you does not constitute church. Now, if there be those who are invalid and they can't get out and they have no way, then that's a blessing for them that they may still be able to see and be able to feel like they're part of something. But for those who are well enough to get out and go to church, you should be in the building, ladies and gentlemen, or you should be in the gathering of the saints, ladies and gentlemen, you should be in the church. You should not be home watching it on TV. So these people have uh, so far made themselves God. And the only one who I felt like was truly honest was um, Jess Hilarious, who said, hey, I go to my uncle's church in Baltimore and um, I don't have a real reason why I don't go. I'm just making excuses and I can try harder to be there. Thank you. Thank you for telling the truth. Thank you for telling the truth. You can try harder to be at church than, than, than get there. I pray that she would make that decision and, 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 and get in there and pray. And I don't know if it's a good church or not, but I pray that it is a good church and she would get in there and that, that, she would give her life to the Lord. And so, you know, that's, um, that's pretty much it. I think, you know, if you want to get some other takes on him calling the church whack and all that stuff, you go to smart Christian channel, you go to, um, you know, everybody's done touched that by now. So I'm not, I wasn't here to give the same exact take as everybody else. Everybody knows how I feel. I'm going to defend the church. I do not feel like it's okay for people to get up and bash the church and take, a, a, a house business outside of the house. You know how your parents always used to tell you uh, what goes on in this house stays in this house. You don't take the house business outside. Whatever go on in house you need to stay in house. We need to deal with our own problems. And we, the church is not perfect. We got our own problems, but you don't need to go outside blasting the problems either. Just like you won't want nobody to go outside your home blasting what's going on in your house and blasting your private airing your dirty laundry. You don't do it to the church. Christ won't be happy and, and you should be very afraid of Christ is not happy with you. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm done. What did you think? Uh, how do you feel about those, uh, tidbits that I brought up? You know, uh, talk to me, leave me a comment. Remember to like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. I truly, truly appreciate you. I love you. God bless you.